I am the Mayan statue, and I am the god of calculos. Hey, what's up, YouTube? In this problem, we're going to do a really cool limit. Okay, so we have the limit as x approaches 0, okay, of x times the sine of x all over 1 minus cosine x. Okay, so 1 minus cosine x. So whenever you're taking limits, the first thing you should always do is plug in the number, right? So just to see what happens, right? Because sometimes you can just plug in the number and you'll get the answer. I love calculos. So if you plug in 0 here, you end up getting 0 times the sine of 0 over 1 minus cosine 0. Right, just plugging in 0 for all the x's, that's what you, that's what you would get. So 0 times the sine of 0 is just 0, right? So you just get 0. Cosine 0 is 1, right? So you get 1 minus 1, so you get 0. So this is a super fail, right? This does not work. So what do you do? Um, you do something else, right? So let's try to figure it out. So when you look at this, on the bottom you have 1 minus cosine x. So you might think, oh, it would be really nice if it was 1 minus cosine squared of x. Because then that way you can use one of the identities, right? Um, so what you can do is you can multiply by like the so-called conjugate. So you multiply by 1 plus cosine x over 1 plus cosine x. And when you do this, something really cool happens, right? So let's see, we still have the limit. x approaches 0. All right, in the numerator we just have x sine x times 1 plus cosine x. So I'll leave that alone. So we have x sine x, parentheses, 1 plus cosine x. Boom. On the bottom, we have 1 minus cosine x times 1 plus cosine x. So that's a minus b, a plus b, right? That's the, that's the difference of squares formula, right? So this will be a squared minus b squared. So 1 squared is 1 minus cosine squared. Now, now you can use an identity, right? Because uh, if you ever have, if you have sine squared plus cosine squared, that's equal to 1, right? So um, if you subtract the cosine squared, you would get sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. So you can write the bottom piece as sine squared. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches 0. Uh, so let's say we have x sine x. Up top, we still have that 1 plus cosine x. And on the bottom, now we have sine squared. All right, good stuff. Good, good stuff. Let's keep going. So what do we do next? I don't know. I guess these cancel, right? So limit, this is limit. X approaches zero. Huh. Oh, I think I see an idea. I have an idea. I have an idea. Let's see. And then the bottom here is sine x, right? Because we lose one of the sine x's. You might say, well, what do you do now? If you plug in zero, you're still in trouble. That's right. But there's a way to do this, I think. So now what we'll do is we're going to rewrite this, okay? So this is x over sine x. I'm going to write this as limit. X approaches zero of 1 plus cosine x over, and check this out, I'm going to flip it. We're going to write it as sine x over x, like this, sine x over x. And we can do that because when you divide, you multiply by the reciprocal, right? So division is multiplication by the reciprocal. So when we're dividing by sine x over x, we're really multiplying by x over sine x. So yeah, it looks okay. And then this is a famous limit, right? This is not, not super famous, but famous enough to where we can use it. So if you take this limit as x approaches 0, you get 1, right? So you can write this as limit x approaches 0 of the top piece, 1 plus cosine x, over limit x approaches 0 of the bottom piece, right? The bottom piece is sine x over x. And then now you just, now you can plug in the numbers. If you plug in 0 here, you get 1 plus cosine 0, right? So you get 1, I'll write it down here, so you get 1 plus cosine 0. And then this limit here, this is a special limit, right? It's equal to 1. Cosine 0 is 1, so you get 1 plus 1. So you just get 1 plus 1 over 1. So you get 2 over 1, so the answer is 2. So the answer to this problem is 2. Kind of a cool problem. Uh, that's it.